I've just created uh, this project on on a, on a PC and then I've brought it on the Mac to record the session. Now bear in mind that you cannot import Max files on an OS X. You have to convert them to FBX and there's a link provided under Unity. The link is to the FBX plugin. So you can get the FBX and what this does is it allows you to export to an FBX format. So let's close that. Now what I did here was I got this file from 3D Studio Max. I'll show you that's my model. On the PC it comes this way. It shows you the pieces. It shows you the animation. Now I had only one animation. You should give the zeroth keyframe a keyframe otherwise the it only allows you to set frames between uh, where you have put keyframes if you see if I go to edit you can see my still starts at 10 it wouldn't allow me to go before 10 because like if I said 1 it doesn't because there was no keyframe there so I just put the idle state from 10 to 10 and it accepted it now my walk is from 15, it's actually from 10 and you can see there's a bit of a jerk there. But I've just put 15 to 30. And you can keep adding that from uh, 31 to 40 is my punch, 41 to 50 is my sword attack, crouching. You can have all your animations here and you can just keep going add, add and you can keep saying which what's the start time, what's the end time and which one should loop, which one should not. So I have this here. and um, the main thing is that this model I want I don't know what changes I did so I'm just going to revert back but this model uh, here it has got the animator component so under assets if you go to create you can create an animator animator controller okay the animator controller goes into the animator component That's the animator controller. Now in the animator controller, all I did was I dragged and dropped these two things. I dragged the still state. I dragged the walk state. I made this state the default, set as default state. And if I do that, it sort of comes here. So you can set anything as the default state and once you do that I created transitions right click transition from here to here and right click transition from here to here and I've said that whenever this transition happens it is going to be triggered by a parameter so you can see under here you, you can have layers but there's parameters and you can go to add and I've added a boolean called is walking I've added a boolean parameter called is walking <coughs> And when you click on the transition, you can say when you go from walk to still, it is is walking becomes false. And when you go from still to walk, is walking becomes true. And you can see I've set it up this way here. I'm going to delete this too. And I've set, already set it up here. Walk. And you can see the parameters are here. Also, I've adjusted the transition to be minimal time. So that's the transition. Okay, so that's the transition here. So the transition doesn't take too much time. Um, and the other way around. So you can you can move these things and make the transition smaller and quicker. So I've got this and this is pretty solid. When is walking is false, it will come here. When is walking is is true, it will go here. And the default state is here. Now <coughs> this is the setup. So you have your actor, the actor has got its animations and the animations are controlled by a controller. And you can see here, if I go here, that's a controller. And actually when you get an FPX model, one controller comes with it, but you, or rather the component comes with it, you still have to go and create the controller. And when you double click on the controller, this is what you get, okay?
Now that controller is here. I, I have actually put the controller here. The one that comes with um, TD Studio Max comes with a empty dialog box here. So when you create your controller, you add it here. Cool. Now the script for this, I'll explain it and I'll put it up on the drive on the website under C Sharp scripts. It's a pretty standard script. I've just uh, I've not done the smooth movement which uh, Mark did. I just did a translate forward backward and a rotate. That's all I did, and I'll show you how it moves. Um, if I just play this. So all I've done is forward and backward and a bit of a rotate. Okay, now um, in the script, there are three steps. First thing you have to get, declare a variable animator, just call it small animator. So you know it's an instance of the type animator. So animator is a variable of type animator. You get the component. So if this, this is script is attached to something, right? You can ask uh, that on start, uh, the animator variable goes and gets the component from the object where the script is attached. Or you can say uh, game object dot something and get it from another object. But in this case, it's just getting it from the same object where the script is attached. Second step. The third step is you get a set conditions. If forward not equal to 0 and not rotation not equal to 0. That means if there is some rotation or some movement, set the boolean animator dot set bool, set that boolean is walking. We had a parameter is walking, set it to true. Otherwise, set it to false. So there are three parts to the script. Here, your variable, get the component and the if condition. I'll put the script and this video up there. Hope this helps.